Three, two, one. Hey, hey, welcome to Wine Jam, where we're looking at the top news for this year. Um, I am Sam Cash, uh, wine expert and uh, founder of this this show. Yeah, um, I'm Crafty Loza, lover of craft beer, uh, co-founder and editor. So at Wine Jam, we are a wine comedy channel. Uh, the top news that we're looking at, we've done a whole road load of episodes on this, so please check them out. Yep. But let's get on to it. And first up uh, is the uh, news that Trump the Winery uh, mm. actually had a blind tasting with other wines in the same region as such. So from £50, sorry, I should say $50 a bottle to $5 a bottle. Um, ranging all through his collection against others in his region. You see, uh, it was one of the top wine news, I think, for this year, for me anyway. So. I know this man, he's a, he's a businessman and everything, uh, but I can't believe he actually um, owns a um, winery, sorry. Um, I mean, like, I mean, how did he do? I well, actually, he didn't... But I, I tell you what, I reckon he probably went to all of the competitors and started to call them, you're fake. Fake wineries. <laughs> I'm real. <laughs> uh, I could, well, you might be saying that after he uh, he actually had 12 wines pitted against the yeah. uh, the other 12 wines and he got none. So he's 12 mil down. Like he was, he's basically, yeah. Well, no good. he may be president, but he's a loser when it comes to wine. Well, his son actually owns the winery, so there's a bit of a bit of a, oh, it's not all to do with me actually. But I was a bit like, wow, though, to lose twelve mil is a bit is a bit unreal yeah. on all your wines there. But uh, yes, yeah, so that was uh, the first big piece of news that we had. Mm -hmm. uh, up next was the um, air airport from Moldova, the city airport of Moldova. Uh, the people had decided that it needed a new name. So they decided to call it the Wines of Moldova Airport. That's kind of strange. I mean, like, <laughs> I've got, I got so brilliant. many questions here. <laughs> well, like, what I love uh, about that is just, like, the French should, are pretty nutty, but these guys are clearly more nuts about it. Than they do you think are. that, like, when you leave Moldova, you're allowed an unlimited amount of wine to take with you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there must be, like... One case for you, <laughs> yeah. one case for you. Just think how heavy those um, those airplanes are. Don't, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about fuel, it's run by wine. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. mean, like, is there breathalysers as well on, on, the, on the, the crew? Well, I, on the crew? <laughs> I thought you were going to say on the customers. Like, boozy kind of, you know, airlines is what I'd yeah. come off. Uh, have a good day. Yeah, thank you. Great day, yeah. Um, but but I, that was such a surprise, literally to call your airport yeah. city Wines of Moldova. I can't wait for something like Ale of Algeria Airport. <laughs> I'm not too sure they do with Ale. But. Uh, yeah, they do now. <laughs> you just go there and I name this Ale. it will be like, oh, really? Yeah. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> yes, so that was one good news. Another airline news was uh, a Canadian man uh, decides to sue an airlines because... They offered a champagne service, and then when he actually boarded the plane, he wasn't given uh, champagne, he was given a sparkling wine. Uh, the the Sunwings Airlines have stated that it was a champagne service, didn't mean it included champagne, which is a bit... Mm, yeah, I, I don't really get that. <laughs> a bit misleading, really. That's what I kind of think from it all. It's just a bit like, well, you're saying a champagne service, clearly. I mean, you know? like, surely, I mean, champagne as a region must be going, like, going mad, thinking... How can you call it champagne and not sell our product? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they must be up in arms looking at the, at the signs going, ooh, sun wings, ooh, how dare you. But I think, he's got, I think he's got a valid point. You know, there's a big price difference between, uh, you know, a normal sparkling and champagne. Oh, what about a craft beer service? Oh, that will definitely have that's, craft beer. That's Crafty Loz's, uh, yeah, that's Crafty Loz's that's dream. dream. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, welcome aboard. Yeah, here you go. Pint of ale, pint of ale. You'll be served by a bald man with a bit of a beard. <laughs> what, behind the bar? Yeah. <laughs> this is he board the plane. Uh, no, we don't want you checking. We just want to give you a beer. Here's an ale, here's another one. Yeah. Um, all right, so that was, the, that was kind of the airline news as such. Um, we also had news which was to do back in uh, uh, Blighty, which was to do with British sparkling wines and uh, a few basically celebrities knocking them off, which was... Kind of bizarre, and it came out came out of nowhere in some areas. One was the big one was Marco Pio White just said uh, kind of particularly rude things about it. The other one was more noticeably, as far as the wine industry was concerned, was the Moe executive and 
there was the comedian Choice Almond, which I remember watching one of the sketches, which was with um, Theresa May holding a party, and her husband says to her, well, you know, we should get some drink for the party. We've got some English sparkling we can give them. And she goes, oh, yeah, that will stop them from drinking too much. And I was like, oh, dear, really? Come on. You're just like, that's the biggest diss ever. Yeah. It's like your own comedy show. This is your own sparkling wine. <laughs> oh, but yeah. I suppose, yeah. you know. I don't know where this dis dissing's coming from. But, you know, th I have to say, you know, they've won competitions. Yes. They're getting investment from champagne houses such as Tattinger and all these mm. other French houses. So, well, I mean, a lot of the start. French have actually come over and taught, or uh, learnt, show us, like, their, their, their skills, that they know their knowledge on how to uh, grow, grow grapes and make mm. sparkling. So it's kind of strange that they're actually dissing when they're actually Doing nurturing. That. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's actually kind of true. <laughs> well, I was kind of surprised by the Moe executive about that. I was just like, well, you make Moe. I mean, you if you have a look at one of our uh, wine quiz shows, Mastermind, you'll see that there's a question about Moe uh, being made and how much they make uh, comparison to British sparkling wine. So it's a bit of a, you know, we should check it out and you'll see what I mean. Uh, on the next one, and it has been the big one of the news this year, has been to do with the environment. Uh, in France, there was a hail which pretty much destroyed 50% of the crops, would you believe? And in California, there was a case of the wildfires that took out most of the vineyards there. If not, wineries have gone down in the flames. Um, well, that's it, really then. There's no wine for next year. What? No, don't say that. Just... <laughs> well, don't say that. Well, 50 percent has gone. It's going like, what are we going to do? <laughs> Drink your beer. We, uh, yeah, I guess uh, I can see just like you jumping around in the white vineyards going, yeah. Yeah, no, there's plenty of wine uh, still knocking about. So, um, you know, I think the only issue is maybe the pricing that might change depending because there's that not that much stock of it. So you know, that's a bit of a. Yeah, but I mean, like, when it comes to like non vintage um, like champagne, you would basically be. Mixing it up with the best stuff and the worst stuff. And oh, all so you're together. thinking of the same so, thing this time around. So sparkling wine, yeah, it's always going to be used. Mm, and they're always trying to get that standard taste. So that's, that's i.e. what non-vintage wine is. That's what that's what a lot of ale people do, isn't it? Just no, our, <laughs> our beers are the same always. We don't need sunshine. No variations. Don't need sunshine. Uh, no vintages. <laughs> Um, yeah, so you know, with vineyards like that, it takes about three years to grow back. So that's how big uh, an impact this has had. Uh, as uh, I was going to state before, but I put it as a little bit of an exclusive at the end. We're doing wine and screen. So uh, as such, we decided that we did wine and movies before. Wine and screen is to do with wine and TV series, um, mm -hmm. which we decided to change it up a little. Um, but yeah, check out the wine and movies episode that we have as well. Um, so. You know, you're sitting down and you're go, having this really dark, murky scene. It's getting really intense, you know. It's, it's like maybe someone's going to get stabbed. I mean, most series happens to be most of those things these days. But they're about to get stabbed. And then you go take a sip of your wine. And it's fruity and it's light. And you're just like, oh, that doesn't, oh, that doesn't correspond with what's going on on the screen, you know. Oh, so that pairing can totally mess it up for you, you know. If you're sitting in front of the screen, oh totally mess it up. Yeah, exactly. And that's why we're taking it really seriously here. <laughs> so uh, we've decided to choose two series each. Uh, uh, Lawrence is going to start us off on... Uh, I'm going to start off with uh, a show that I really enjoyed. I think I've done four or five uh, series called The Vikings, if you watched it. Um, and there's little things that I've kind of noticed a bit about that. Say, the thing is, they love their gods. Oh, um, okay. Odin and Thor. Oh, just saying, Thor. We've, we've got an episode, uh, Thor versus Wine. So please check that out. Plug. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, they love their gods. So I'm going for a grape of the name of Bacchus, which is the god of wine. The god of wine. And also, these Vikings, they love to raid, especially chapels are gone for Chapel Down. That's there you go. So that is a Bacchus. British wine from Kent. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you're going to have a bit of a taste of this. Yep, as we do. Uh, so this is this should be quite light. It's quite uh, clean, crisp. Uh, I wouldn't say too much fruit, more on the kind of um, 
mineral side, but I don't know if that's technically a right term to use when you're tasting wine. But uh, yeah, so tell me, what do you think of it? Mm. Ah, um, yeah, I really quite like this. It's very, um, got a, lot, a bit of lychee, uh, orange peel. Oh, okay. Uh, mineral, minerally. Yeah, that's really nice. All right, so it kind of cuts through. Uh, Would you like to try some? I will try some, I might as well. Mm. Floral on the nose. Oh yeah, I do get that uh, orange peel in that. Yeah, it's fresh, it's citrusy with that uh, clean finish. Bit of pineapple. Yeah, well, I don't know. <laughs> but I tell you what, this is really nice. Uh, it's, it's English. Kind of has that Nordic feel to it, being a Vikings <laughs> uh, pairing. So uh, that's why we chose this one. So that would be a nice one to sit through the series watching that. Yeah. Uh, I had kind of been already starting on my, uh, on my particular wine. Uh, and that was for the new Punisher season that's just going to be starting very soon. Uh, he's been in Daredevil, so I was really excited to see him in uh, his own uh, spin-off as such. So he's a, he's a bit of a bloody, brutal person. And there's even the storyline has to be the same. So it has to be American, has to be big, full-bodied, has to have, a, you know, kind of intensity or flavours going on. So I've got myself this red, which is, as I pull it over over here... Oh, one second. There we go. And this one is called Chronic, uh, Chronic Sellers. Sellers. Uh, these are the guys, that's a producer, and then the name of this is Purple Paradise, that was it. Mm. Uh, from Paso Robles in the Californian region. Uh, this is made by two brothers. Uh, so it's a... Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a family-run kind of uh, business as such. They had studied over in America and France. They decided to do this particular blend, which is Infantile Peter Syrah, Syrah, and Grenache. So, and you can tell the reason I've also chosen this is the labelling, which is like the Punisher's scar yes. on the face that he has. So, I've already been slightly drinking this. I drink some more. <laughs> but I would already say, as you've already noticed, I've so been tasting like? this. Full-bodied, um, quite, mur quite murky, like I said in the beginning one. Um, it's uh, quite intense uh, as such as well, with some cherries, raspberries um, put into there. Mm. There's also definitely oak as well, which is quite strong in that. There's a bit of grip, and um, yeah, it, it goes along with what I said. It's quite a powerful wine, I think. It's got a juiciness to it, you know. Mm -hmm. There's that sort of slight blood flavour to it, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, that's more my recommendation for the Punisher coming out soon, I believe. Yeah. So you're next up with your uh, next uh, yes. series. Which one is you've decided to go for? Um, I've gone for uh, another white. Okay. But, uh, the series that I'm, I'm going for is. Stranger Things. Oh, uh, it's been quite popular, isn't it? It's yeah, a kind it's been of good. second series now. Uh, you can find it on Netflix. Um, yeah, no, it's good. It's this very nostalgic kind of show where it's kind of like they've gone through like looking at things like ET and um, Goonies or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, kids, it's quite good to have a group of kids running around, having screaming. adventure and all that stuff. Yeah, something happening all the other. <laughs> yeah. So I've gone for something a bit peculiar. Oh, so it has to be strange kind of wine. Mm-hmm. I've gone for uh, a, a wine, well, the grape. Uh, it's actually, this is from... Um, Hungary. From Hungary. <laughs> um, and the grape is Zenit. So this is... Let the paper have a closer look. It's a good label, uh, I think. Uh, it's got international... I mean, it should go with Zorro as the film. <laughs> with the massive Z. Oh, can you see that? But uh, Zenit is a grape. Um, it's made by a family uh, in a place called Solvia. I can't remember if I'm pronouncing it Let correctly. Let me have a look in front of us. But um, yeah, it's made by a family, um, small producers. Hungry to make kind of known of all their Tokais, if you're obviously in the, in the wine industry, you know that. That's a kind of a sweet wine. Zenit was something that I hadn't come across before. So, um, so it's, it's it's basically it's the, the bastard child of <laughs> two grapes, one called Bouvier and the other one called, correct me on this, <laughs> Ezerajo. Yeah, or uh, Ezerajo. Yeah, I'll show you that. There you go. Can you see that? You try and say it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's um, it's been an, it's an interesting one with sort of. Uh, 
cold fermentation process, stainless steel uh, vats that it goes into, and um, a stealthy process, so it kind of has a bit of a reductive manner about it. Uh, it's, I mean, for me personally, it's, I'm excited to kind of strain, tie this strange new grape, and, um, you know, I should think it's uh, got a nice sort of uh, vibrancy about it. So, uh, coming from from Hungary, I sort of expected this to be quite sweet, but actually, it's like sort of off dry. It's really nice. It's very, I kind of it make, it makes me think of Sauvignon Blanc. It's not a Sauvignon Blanc, though, but it's it's got like sort of like that sort of fruitiness. Interesting, interesting. What kind of uh, flavours are you, are you seeing? I'm going to grab some from you. They may be saying that. I think it's probably more like a, an Italian white. Oh, yeah. That's more like a... God, I hate to say it, it's more like a really good Pinot Grigio. <laughs> yes, yes. So like a really that, good yes. one, not like the yellow mm. stuff that you usually get. And uh, it, it lingers on the tongue. Yeah, it's well made. Yeah, I think it's uh, that or so, something from the Aldeigi, which is from the north of Italy. That kind of um, particular, um, well, actually one that springs to mind is a one called Tramin, which they do a Gewurz, and it's really kind of clean, crisp, not um, sweet. And yet it's just a really kind of flor florent. It's kind of floral and... Um, and light aromas really on that one yeah so that's a good choice uh so guys um we have uh hopefully gonna have a hundred viewers by this point yes um so that's the other kind of so when you're watching this yeah just uh, subscribe. subscribe away we are at 97 i saw last yeah, so a few more to go a few more to go um obviously hit the no no uh, notification button and let us know what you think of the videos obviously we're, we're glad to hear anything from you guys uh, anything you want us to cover, please do. But for me, some cash, and from and me, Crafty Lodger, we'll see you soon. See you in the new year. Bye, guys. See ya. Bye. Right. We've got four four wines to go for. Um, which one should we have? Oh, it's nine o'clock. Yeah. Um, and stop recording. <laughs> oh, shit, yeah. Anyway, uh, yes. <laughs> see you in the new year. <laughs> we got wine to drink.